Hello, my dear friends. This is a Tainty Cat. My name is Catherine. Today, I want to continue to create、uh, still lives with、uh, flowers. Today, it's gonna be、uh, peonies and、uh, blue bells. And、uh, we start from the very simple step, which is composition. We have to plan a table where later we will put a vase and a flowers. Before, on a previous tutorials, we were talking how to imitate a stone for tabletop,、uh, and、uh, today I wanna create a fabric、uh, with a pattern on it, cause this detail also very popular for、um, compositions and still lives. This is a demo tutorial. It's going for twenty-five minutes, and、uh, I want to share to you main steps you need to know. And if you're interesting to paint with me in a real time, in an actual speed,、um, I want to let you know the real version,、um, full tutorial going for two hours and fifteen minutes, and. There we creating、uh, this、uh, flower bouquet step by step in a very detailed comments about layering, about color mixing, everything you need to know to create this composition. You can follow、uh, links in the description box, and you can find their all info about real time tutorials. Ah,、uh, first steps here. Very close to previous、uh, still lives.、Uh, it's a background I uh, painted from the deep colors to the light. We already talk about it in、uh, still lives as a pansies and a bouquet of a lilac. It's、uh, tutorials the same serial. And、um, you can combine a、uh, different details from the same、uh, serial tutorials. You can、uh, find your own favorite combinations of flowers, vases, and、uh, different types of、uh, tabletop. So here it's a fabric. Take a look.、Uh, deep navy blue. I am mixing、uh, blue with、uh, black. And we have here. Top surface and a side surface. Of course, on a side part, it's a shadow there, and a light will be laying on a top. So you can see a difference, visible difference between these two faces. The lightest area here gonna be on the edge of the fabric. Next, what color for the pattern need to be used here? How to find it? Take a look. We already have a spot on the palette, isn't it? We've been working here, mixing here colors for fabric before. So of course we can take some samples. Pattern need to be visible,、uh, but not too contrasted compared to color of the fabric, because still it's just a part of the whole composition. It don't need to take too much attention from the viewer. How to create a pattern? Look, we have a top surface and a side surface. Ah,、uh, here I'm using very simple-looking flowers, round-shaped, because on this shape I want to demonstrate how pattern changing on a top face. Here we're gonna have perspective changes. So if it's a round shape on a top. It's gonna look as an oval, stretched on the left and right, and squeezed from the top and the bottom like this. But on the side face, we gonna see those circles without any changes, perspective changes. As soon as Pattern done. I saved a bit of my time.、Uh, didn't put any pattern on area where napkin and a vase gonna、mm, be placed later. So next, we ready to add、uh, highlights on the pattern, but highlights, of course, 
will be only on the top. I painting highlights, elements, and details from the edge, and blending bit up. So spreading lighter colors only on a top face. Of course, we have to put a tiny highlight reflect on the edge of the fabric itself. If you want to get a silkish fabric, you have to put a stronger reflections and uh, highlights. If you're looking for more velvety texture, more velvety fabric, uh, reflections have to be softer. Those highlights mm, need to be blended a bit better. Don't choose too difficult um, patterns from the start if this part of the still life new for you. Pattern I use here it's uh, simple flowers and some curved lines. That's it. But as soon as highlighting here done, it's looking very interesting and uh, complicated enough. Next step, we have to transfer a sketch and you can find an easy 3-minute tutorial on my channel how to do it. Uh, sketch ready to print on a normal print paper you can find uh, on my Patreon. Please download it, print it before you're starting a tutorial. Main shapes are here and uh, let's uh, begin from the napkin. Flat brush. Consistency of acrylic is kind of thick. Um, it's dried a little bit on my palette already, but layer thin enough. And uh, when you will paint this first layer of the fabric of the white napkin, try to fo follow a natural shapes of folds here about a lace trim. It depends how wide it's gonna be already from this top. See, it's visible stripe on the end of the napkin and you already can feel this shape. Some lines are wavy a little bit, so I really try to follow those lines how fabric going laying on a table pattern for the lace trim gonna be simple here as well look the size of the paper my um, painting surface here it's a letter size a4 it's not uh, that big so um if you want to create really rich lace trim you have to go for bigger size of the painting surface there yes we can include lots of tiny details and it will be easier to get to bring there on a high detailing level but here area way too small so pattern really simple it's just a lines of dots bigger dots or smaller dots and as soon as i create it of course lines of the dots have to repeat the line of your lace trim it's same curved as soon as it done for two uh, lace trims here i put it some highlights and ready move to the next uh, area next detail here which is vase drapery mm. It's a common detail, uh, common, let's say, ingredient for still lifes. And if you're looking for more um, detailed instruction, how to create values for folds, highlights and uh, shadows, please welcome on my real-time tutorial. There we have uh, more time to talk about uh, this moment. And of course, there we create it step by step without any cuts. About patterns on a vase. This tutorial, you know, it's all about patterns on objects. Main idea. Pattern have same. Shadow and lights on it. It can't stay flat if object where pattern put it 
contains those area with lights and shadows. So imagine blue pattern, very deep, dark blue in the shadows on a vase and really light and bluish on a light, on a, a highlight spot there. Uh, vase done, let's go to the next step, it's a green leaves. Uh, actually, there is a many, many different ways how to create a peonies. It's a really beautiful flowers with many petals and uh, we have many sorts of it and the colors can be different. I will create a pink ones with a very fluffy um, center. It's gonna look as a pom-pom and um, I want to share to you my favorite way actually favorite way to create it because it's just an easy one uh, green leaves here it's a big flat very deep and bluish green I mixed a uh, green medium plus uh, cobalt blue together of course we have to give a light to the leaves as well so I mixed plus white uh, my brush here it's a flat and uh, slanted I adore this type of the brushes for green leaves. It's just painting by itself. I don't need to do anything. It's pointy enough. It's have a nice sharp edge, so it's giving a nice control to your brush strokes. That's all we need from the brushes here. Next, little fish will help to me. If you have no any sponges for painting, you can grab just a kitchen uh, sponge. It's a little bit different, uh, texture more rough, I'd say, compared to painting sponges. But kitchen sponges uh, also will give here a nice effect. I put it four colors in the same spot. It's a carmine, it's um, vermilion, ochre, light and uh, umber burnt all together. I grabbed this mix on my sponge, mix a bit on my palette and I'm just stamping, stamping these peonies in the center. Actually, look, on this sketch, each flower have an inner area where we have to sponge with a deep color and area for big petals all around. Those leaves don't sponge it, leave it for the uh, flat and oval shaped brushes. Right, sp uh, sponging done, we don't have to wait uh, till it's well drying because um, I like an effect when uh, sponged areas Mixing a little bit with a layers on top, which going next. I will start from the left peony. Mm, uh, this flower have a mostly side view, so mm, only a flower that fully viewed uh, for us. Um, it's turned to the front completely. It's a peony and a Santa. All others uh, have some different angles and we will um, paint here two buds as well. So this one have a bigger petals around. Next I'm painting a Santa one by one. Uh, petals in the center usually uh, much more tiny. They can be twisted a little bit, curved somehow. Mm. Type of the brush. It's a normal round uh, pointy watercolor brush. Brush strokes from this type of brushes already looking as a petals. Mm, like this. And here for petals I'm mixing more carmine. You can feel here no hint of um, ochre light, for example, right? We already have done it and it's mixing a little bit from the previous layer. Uh, next flower turned to us, opened uh, completely. Uh, I created random looking brush strokes in the center and here, yes, I have to wait a little bit till it will dry. And this time I'm creating petals, huge petals around with a flat and oval shaped brushes. 
let me bring more white and uh, I want to complete shape of the third big peony here. One brush stroke mean one petal. Take a look. Long brush strokes. Do not over mix colors on a palette because this way petals will look too plastic because of a really well mixed colors. Usually natural petals, they are, have really slightly but still visible different shades in one petal and this how we can get the singular effect. Bring a bit of carmine white top, not much, mix not too long, this way you will have a different uh, colors on a brush same time. Next, uh, random brush strokes in the center of the biggest peony here already dried and I choose a small brush number zero and imagine you have to choose just one edge of the random brush stroke and put there a highlight. Brush strokes right now have to be a very gentle thin enough Color can be not just white, sometimes I like to use a light pink, sometimes white looking good enough, but the whitest details I'd like to put in the very end of the tutorial. And we have to repeat this detailing for each flower hair and a buds of course that's not possible to paint all flowers in the same time of course we have just a one brush right so we need to touch flower by flower bring details one then another then a third one and go and go don't paint one flower completely and then jump to the second one. This way, detailing level of uh, all flowers can be different. Uh, other way, I really recommend to you, go from the general to specific, main shapes and colors first, then a second layer with a middle detailing, and then a tiny detailing with the highlights, maybe some interesting edges on the petals. I like to use a different shape of brushes. Sometimes it's a flat and oval for the biggest and uh, the most visible petals of uh, a peony, or just a nice shape for it, you know. But also I like to use flat slanted brush. This one have a more control and it's giving more sharp looking edges of the petals. But I don't really like a triangle shape of the um, start of the brush stroke there. So be careful with this moment. Of course, tiny brushes like a zero number one. It's giving a nice control on the details, especially in the center of the flowers. True, there we have a lot of it. So change it. Try to analyze on what area you're painting in the moment and of course try to experiment with the different shapes of brushes. They all have unique brush strokes and a combination of different ones giving nice and rich looking result. In a real-time tutorial uh, you will have all my comments about what brushes I'm using at what moment, but uh, in general just try to analyze your own needs and the moment. And you know, I'd say there is no universal advice about shape or a number of the brush. First of all, uh, same sized uh, brushes can have different numbers. Depends what brand it is. And uh, I'd say uh, type and uh, shape and the size of the brush. It depends from the um, experience you have. When you're really painting for a long time, you probably will be comfortable enough with uh, almost all sizes uh, and uh, even a tiny details 
available to create for you with the bigger brushes. But if you're just a beginner, you will switch more often or from size to size, because of course, for the best control for tiny lines, you will looking for tinier brush. That's nothing wrong with it. Everything came with experience. Just try to hear yourself, your own needs, what you looking for. Uh, if you like result without a blue bells, you can just stop, put your sign, and painting done. But if you wanna continue with me, I'm gonna include uh, a tiny blue bells everywhere here in a flower bouquet. Why I like it? Because we already used lots of uh, cobalt blue here for this still life, and uh, I believe more a tiny blue spots here um, will bring more balanced final look. Uh, the main rule, in my view, how um, tones gonna be placed here. Take a look. On the right side, we have a light wall behind it. So for contrast, it's best to choose deep, deep blue color for um, bells and uh, little buds. And the opposite way, on the left side, there is we have a dark shaded wall behind a flower bouquet and a little blue bells here they are light. As soon as you put it as much as you like, those blue stars, I'd say, let's connect them all, let's connect them to the uh, main shape of bouquet. So <laughs> flowers not floating in the air, of course, uh, just a green colors. And again, try to analyze what you have behind and around. If area around of a tiny stems of the bells is deep shaded, go for light green. And if you see like it's a light area around and um, behind it, go for deep green. And the very last detail here, it's a tiny white spots in the center of the blue bells and it's a bringing extra detailing level to the whole composition. I will add a sharp highlights on some petals, not everywhere. It's not a plastic flowers that all the same, you know, it's a natural one. So some of them can have a really contrasted and sharp edge and some of them haven't. I'm just trying to be uh, random as much as I can. And let's take a final look. Maybe here, one more. And I will put my sign. Same for you, my friends. Don't forget about this detail and, of course, be proud of your painting. It doesn't matter if you're following tutorial or not. You're still learning yourself and uh, those paintings you're creating, it's your own. And uh, what I also want to demonstrate here, if you want to make some area very sharp and attractive, put a final highlighting only in this area. For example, let's take this center of the main peony and only very center I will touch with my um, slanted brush. Highlights gentle, but so shiny here. It's a clear white. And right now this peony looking as really a main as a leading flower in a bouquet. My friends, my painting done. If you still have any questions, please don't be shy to ask me in the comments. Welcome on my real-time tutorial and let's paint this bouquet together, step by step, in actual speed. I will be really happy if you will share to me your painting through the uh, Patreon wall, Facebook and Instagram, hashtag PaintyCat, and of course, 
join me on a YouTube channel, subscribe me, and I'll catch you on the next tutorials. It was a painty cat. I wish you all the best. Bye-bye.